Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I have decided to make this video this morning simply because I have been getting an abundance of emails in regards to dreams that are containing where folks are dreaming that they're in their former school or they're at a former residence or they're dreaming they're with a former husband or mate or what have you and I thought it very imperative to address this matter because number one I get too many emails to respond I, I get a, a minimum of about 50 to 60 emails per day and that's just in Facebook alone that is in my other email addresses and so on so I really want to teach on this I'm going to be very brief as possible about it as it relates to this particular dream of dreaming of your former house your former uh, school and so on first of all what I want us to understand is a basic principle as it relates to to dreams and like I've been mentioning in my uh, articles that most of you follow is the fact that your dream in and of itself is spiritual and we need to make this clear what that simply means is that even though you are physically at rest or you're physically sleeping, the real you, which is your spirit, is literally interacting in the spiritual realm. As a result of that, your spirit, sorry, the spirits that are in that, that spiritual realm, be it uh, the spirits of God or the spirits of the enemy, both of them are seeking an agreement with you, the human being, in order to establish covenants basically to give them the right to operate in your life all throughout the scriptures you would find this you know where God met with this one and that one and forged a covenant and therefore certain things would come to part as a result of that covenant so in this particular teaching this morning that we're going to do we're going to deal with again dreams that are dealing with you always dreaming about your child at home or you're dreaming about your former college or former apartment or home that you live in Every dream of that nature, and I want you to hear this, every time you have a dream of that nature, and the nature what I'm talking about here is where you're dreaming about former things, symbolically the dream is revealing a spirit of setback, a spirit of delay, a spirit that is either pending or currently in your life that's preventing you from going to a certain level or to the next level in a certain area of your life. So if you've had a dream, especially if that dream was repetitive, if you've had a dream and in this dream you're always dreaming about where you lived with your grandmother or where you lived as a child, remember now these portions of your life, of your life was already completed. They, they're, not, they're not happening anymore. So why are you still dreaming about your former college days or your former school, primary school, whatever? It's a spirit of setback. You have to, you have to now pay attention to these dreams and begin to target these dreams in prayer. The second point I want to make to you is that Whenever you're experiencing these dreams, I promise you, and I tell you this from experience and the many people that I've counseled with, anytime you're having a dream where you're dreaming about your, your former whatever, this dream means that there's something right on the brink, a breakthrough right on the brink for you. So now the dream appears or the dream begins to now reveal to you the invisible forces that's fighting that blessing that's fighting that thing that God has already released and I'll prove it to you in the book of Ephesians Ephesians chapter 1 I think it's verses 3 to verse 4 and it says that how God has already past tense blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places or in spiritual places now, I say to you all the time, and I know you hear me repeat it a lot, but I only repeat it because I need you to understand this basic principles of dream. The spirit world, which is the world that we cannot see, is the origin of all things. 
That's the bottom line. Everything that you can physically relate to to your five senses is as a result of the spirit realm or the world that you cannot see. The world that you cannot see, which is very much active in our physical world, that world is where everything happens. So, the Bible says that God has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So that means everything for us to prosper, everything for us to go forward, everything for us to advance, in its raw state, it's spiritual. And according to that scripture, it says he has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places. Heavenly places really mean in the spiritual realm. Now, each one of those blessings are assigned to specific periods of our lives. For example, let's say your child is graduating from college next year. That's a blessing. And God has assigned that blessing for that particular time. Now, because in the realm of the spirit, there are two forces, which is the good side and the bad side. The enemy's job now, spiritually, originally, is to fight that blessing. So what's going to happen now? You're going to have a problem with the school fee. The child may just start acting up crazy, winding down towards the final stages of their graduation, whatever the case may be. But you as the believer must look beyond what you see physical. And now focus on the spiritual nature as to why these things are happening. So rather than fussing the child or coming at the school or trying to get a loan or whatever, you now have to look at the spirit of setback, the spirit of delay, the spirit of confusion. See, these are the components through the actions of this particular situation that you need to look at. And now you attack that in prayer. You don't attack the people. You don't attack the things. The spirit behind it, and this is something that I, I reiterate because I know how much our churches get us to focus on things that are physical, which is the first stage of defeat as it relates to spiritual warfare. So like I said earlier, if you're having dreams where you're always dreaming about your Grammy house, you're always dreaming about a former home that you live in, you're dreaming where you were in your school uniform or your dream of your former college. All of these dreams represent a spirit of setback, a spirit of delay, a spirit of hindrance. And like I said earlier, the only reason why these dreams are manifesting themselves to you is because these represent the spirits that are pending or currently in your lives to fight a pending blessing. Thus, these dreams come about as a result of a pending breakthrough. If you're expecting some monies, if you're expecting to get a new home, if you, whatever it is that you are anticipating, then the dreams are showing you that there is a fight spiritually. And the forces that are fighting you spiritually are hoping that you come at the physical things in your life, which they love, because the primary law of the spiritual realm as it relates to spiritual warfare to the believers is found, which is in Ephesians 6 and 12, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So when we see things breaking down on the back end, just before some expectation, know for sure that there are demonic forces consistently working against you to ensure that you don't ever meet that breakthrough. Therefore, God in his infinite wisdom has already at the right times in your life set people, places, things, situations, and environments to advance you. So your prayer got to be now, Father, I've seen this dream. I've dreamed where I, I saw I was in my Grammy house or I saw I was in my former school uniform. I saw I was at my former college or my ex-husband and I was together or my former boyfriend, girlfriend. And I understand that these dreams represent setback. Therefore, Lord, any evil, foul spirit of setback, delay, hindrance that are coming at me or currently in my life to prevent me from connecting to your original plan for my life, then I cancel it. I curse it from the very root. Any demonic force operating against me, any evil altar speaking against my destiny that is about to cause me not to get to the next level, I reject it in the name of Jesus. 
and I come in agreement with what God has ordained for me for this particular time. I bind myself to his original plan for my life before the foundation of the world. So you have to look at things from a spiritual perspective. And this is why many believers have a tough time achieving in life. They have a tough time because they are, I don't know why, but they are bound to attacking the physical, attacking what they see or what their five senses relate to. So I stopped by this morning and again it was as a result of the the myriad of emails that I get and, and a lot of you are there saying okay how come you don't answer this email? Trust me. I literally get hundreds of emails from my different email uh, addresses and it's very difficult for me to answer all of them. Uh, so this particular teaching that I'm doing this morning is as a result of the, 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 the amount of emails that I've got on the same topic. Why am I always dreaming about my former childhood home? Why am I always dreaming about my former college, my former school? I'm here to tell you that it's a spirit of setback that you need to fight, that you need to come against. If you don't do that, then expect to circle the same mountain all over again. Expect to be on the brink, on the precipice of a breakthrough and it never happens for you. And the reason why it never happens for you because you do the exact same thing when the opportunity is about to or is presenting itself. You sit back and you make comments like, well, I'm going to leave it to God, you know. Uh, God don't sleep and uh, God is in control. Yes, he is in control. But there are certain things that you need to do to facilitate your blessing. To facilitate you uh, going to the next level in life. I can tell you of personal experiences that I've had where I would have dreams where I'm back to my childhood home when I was four, five, six years old. Or I would have dreams to my former school. And every time those dreams come, there is something pending in the natural for me, where it's a release of finances, whether it's an opportunity or whatever the case may be. There is that devil that's sitting there, sitting, trying to prevent what's about to happen. So I'm saying to you today, Speak to the realm of the spirit. Speak to the unseen forces that the dreams are making you quite aware that they are present and they are on God and totally responsible for ensuring that you don't ever get out of the pit that you are in. Whether you are saved or not, God has made opportunities available for you. The only difference between you and and getting to that opportunity is your lack of knowledge. That's it. Let me prove it to you. You are a Christian. You love God. But there are people out there who are not Christians, who are probably atheists, and they're excelling in life. How is that possible when you're the child of God? How is that possible when you're claiming you're the head, not the tail, you're above only? Not? How is that possible? Knowledge. Simple as that. It is something they know that you don't know that they are able to use as a weapon to cut down the barriers, to cut down the stumbling blocks, to cut down the invisible uh, resistance that's coming against them that would have normally prevented them from getting ahead. Excuse me. Now remember, God's original plan for man, I'm going to wrap up right here. God's original plan for man, again, I repeat this all the time, is found in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 28. Where after creating Adam and Eve, the scripture clearly says in Genesis 28, 1 and 28, it says, And God bless them. Two things we need to look at here. What is this blessing? And who is the them he's talking about? Well, the blessing is something invisible. It's not nothing tangible. It's spiritual. And the scripture says that God blessed them, which was Adam and Eve. But look what this invisible blessing did. It caused them to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, and to subdue. Now, to be fruitful means to increase. To multiply means to increase. To replenish means to increase. 
So God's original plan for man is that from the day he enters this earth realm, is supposed to continually advance, advance. The fourth thing that this blessing was responsible for, the scripture says in Genesis 1 and 28, was to cause them to subdue. And the word subdue means to restrain or to restrict something that's opposing you, but you restrain it to the point where you are over it or your foot is upon it. Why would God give Adam and Eve the ability to subdue something in the perfect garden? Well, simple. Because wherever there is a blessing, wherever there is favor, wherever there is something to advance you, there will simultaneously be something to restrict, to prevent, to delay, to set back that blessing. So incorporated in your future blessing is that you have the ability to subdue and to challenge whatever visible or un invisible force that's about to fight it. So I want to leave you with this. If you are having dreams, and those dreams are always taking you back to areas of your life that you've already journeyed, areas of your life that you've already accomplished, then say to yourself, just ask yourself, why would I dream about living in my former home? Why would I dream about my child at home? Why would I dream about, I remember living with Grammy and them, or I remember this old car. Not the people. You will begin to fight. Not, not, don't fight the people anymore. Don't say, well, this boss is trying to stop me from getting this promotion. Or the committee of the church don't want me to be ordained as minister. Or I know it's my time to elevate to a certain area in my life, but it look like this person against me. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Forget the people. Don't, don't, the people are only distractions. They are only tools of the enemy to to make you focus on things that are physical. But your dreams, boy, I love this. Yeah, your dreams, which are spiritual monitors, are giving you excerpts of the activity in the realm of the spirit that's working against you. It's as simple as that. So again, if, if you know there's a, you, you probably apply to the bank for a certain loan and you're waiting for the decision or, uh, you, you, you plan or you applied for a certain promotion or you're waiting on some funds for your school tuition. Anyway, the, the, the underlying tone, what I'm saying here is that you are expecting something to take you to another level. But all of a sudden, you've had these dreams where you're set, you're, you're back in a former setting. Curse that in the name of Jesus. Come against that with the blood of Jesus. You need to speak to the realm of the spirit. Don't focus on the people, quote unquote, who have the power to advance you, but they seem to be oppressing you or jealous of you. These are just distractions. Your fight is against the forces of the spiritual realm that's influencing those people to reject your promotion, to prevent you from going forward. So I want to pray with you right now. I'm done teaching. I'm not going to stay long. I just have to address this because I'm getting so much emails on it. I want to pray for everyone that's watching me and that will watch this video in the future. If you've had dreams that is taking you back to your former years and the things that you would have done, but it's putting you now from who you are right now at your age right now back in those former settings. I come against those dreams. I cancel them in the realm of the spirit. I speak, decree, and declare that every evil verdict that has been levied against your life by ancestral curses, generational curses, bloodline curses, I speak to those forces and command them to be paralyzed in the realm of the spirit. And every evil voice speaking against your destiny to influence to the, the people who are supposed to promote you or who was put in, put in place to promote you, every evil voice speaking to them to reject you, to put you aside, to dismiss you, I silence those evil voices. Now I pray that the angelic host of the Lord, that God has put and assigned to you according to uh, Psalms 91 verses 11 and 12, that those angelic forces will go forth 
and perform the law of the Lord according to the Isaiah 54 and 7. And the spiritual law dictates this. Absolutely no weapon that has been formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue, I like this piece, every tongue, every evil tongue that has risen up against you in judgment, particularly as it relates to your blessings, I condemn that in the name of Jesus. This day you will go forward. This day your blessings will embrace you. This day God will catapult you to where you should have been at this point in your life. There will be no more delay. There will be no more setback. Spirit of discouragement. Spirit of defeat. Spirit of, in, uh, of, of feeling in, incompetent. I bind your powers and I release upon the people watching this right now that the spirit of advancement the spirit of, of, of catapulting you and slingshotting you to where God has called you to be at this point in your life will embrace you it is set to welcome you no devil no demon will have the opportunity to delay you anymore you know why and I'm gonna tell you why the scripture says to us in Proverbs 11, verse 9, part B. And it says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. I have just given you the knowledge of God. So therefore, you are a candidate for deliverance. So nothing could stop you right now. If you were expecting some monies, if you were expecting whatever it was, which you've been praying for, well, this video this morning has come to confirm and to attest to you that God is now giving you the knowledge. There's another step of what you need to do in order to collide, in order to crash with that blessing that has been prepared for you. The enemy has set things in place to block it, but not today. Because the Lord and the word of the Lord has been released to you that you must cancel, you must rebuke those dreams, rebuke the spirit of delay, rebuke the spirit of setback, rebuke every spirit that you have witnessed infiltrate your life to cause you not to go forward you have been created you have been designed to advance in this world and anything that remotely look as if it's trying to hold you back you need to deal with that in prayer again and i, and I have to repeat this do not come do, don't fight people don't fight things don't fight environments Look at the consistency in the negative patterns in those people, in those environments, in those places. Attack those things because they are the spirits that's influencing them. Don't attack the people. I know right now someone watching, there's someone on your job who was relentless. Who was relentless. They doing everything in their power to make sure you don't get ahead. They're doing, they're, they're bullies. But take it from me, that's a demon, that's a devil who have, who they have allowed to rise up in them. But you got to rise up with the Spirit of God in you and speak to that devil. Not walk up to them and speak to them. You could sit right there and pray. Father God, I noticed this demon, this devil, this Jezebel spirit in this man or this woman. And I subdue it by the power of the living God. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than that demon, that bully, that devil that is there trying to block me. So you got to rise up. You got to speak and declare the word of God. Like I've said in so many of my articles, when you speak the word of God, which are the laws of God, the spirit realm must submit. So I don't care what powers they work in with. I don't care who devil, what demon, what witch, what warlock, what altar, what evil sacrifice. Guess what? They got to submit when you begin to declare the word of God. Father God, your word declares in uh, Psalms 115 verse 14 that you will increase me more and more, me and my children. Father, your word declares in Proverbs uh, 11 and 21 that though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I am the righteous. My children are my seed. And according to the laws of God, they shall be delivered. 
That's how you gotta pray. Pray the word of God. Don't get mad and cuss with the physical people. That ain't got you. In fact, you you working against you. Get the scriptures. Get the relevant word of God, and now begin to declare it. Begin to speak it. You know, every morning when I get up and I begin to go into prayer, the first things I start with after covering me and my family with the whole arm of God, I say, Lord, now open my spiritual eyes throughout the course of this day. Amplify my spirit of discernment, discernment, so I can now see beyond the physical. I see beyond the pretenses. I see beyond, oh child, how you doing? Uh-uh. God, show me that devil sitting on their shoulder that just waiting for the opportunity to come at me. But I come at that devil. I bind your powers. And I pray that you would come to disgrace and dishonor anyone that comes up against me. That's how you got to pray. That's how you get. So I want to encourage you, man. Take your dream serious. Okay? God ain't planning no movie for you. Take those dreams serious. You are being given warnings. God has given you instructions. God has given you wisdom. So because he sees what's ahead. And just like in any war, your dreams is the intelligence branch of your spiritual warfare. And if you reject those dreams, if you reject reject those instructions, then, then you care. Don't come back later and say, oh Lord. No, 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 no. You, you, you lack the knowledge. You lack the knowledge. I, I did say earlier, this is the end of it, right? Okay, this is the end of it again. <laughs> so, pray, ask God. Right now, God, open up my spiritual eyes. Open up my spiritual eyes. Open up my spiritual understanding so that I could put aside this anger towards the supervisor, this boss, or whomever you feel is blocking your progress. Now, Lord, based on this teaching this morning, I, um, I want to see beyond that. And what I want to see is that demon. I want to see that demon who's behind that boss, behind that supervisor, behind that co-worker who just insists on making life for me. And now, Lord, I target my prayers be for that devil. See, once you disable the devil, then the physical person got to fall in line. Because remember, it was the influence of that devil that was causing them to do what they do. So, basically, the person or the places or the things are puppets. They're puppets to the evil spirits that they don't even know got them like fools. But today, Father God, today we speak the word of God. We speak it, we decree it, we declare it. And your word declares, Father God, according to Psalm 7, it says that those same wicked people, that the ditches that they have dug for others, that they will fall into it themselves. Your same word of God in Proverbs 7, sorry, Psalm chapter 7, I think it's verses 15 and 16, it says that their own wicked dealing shall fall upon their own heads. That's what the word of God says. The word of God says, I believe it's in Psalms uh, 109 and 17, it says that he that loveth curses or cursings, let it come upon him. And he that delighted not in blessings, then let it be far from him. Bless the prayer for those who insist on coming against you and coming against me. I speak the unadulterated word of God. And when I speak that word into the atmosphere, into my surroundings, into the invisible realm, then that realm, which I love, is the original of all things, must submit to the word of God. It, it, it got no other... Uh, see, the, the, the spirits of the spiritual realm... When I speak the word of God, this isn't nothing for them to negotiate, you know. This is the edict of God. This is the word of God. This is the word of God that, that, that created everything. So it must submit to it. Today. Then we end this. You should be praying right now. And you should be praying the word of God right now. Is it a home that you're looking forward to? Is it a car? Is it your children's tuition? Is it uh, some bill? Some note you have to pay, but you ain't got no money, but someone promised you something more, or you expect some money from so-and-so, and all you've been seeing was delay and said, back, go back to your dreams. I'm sure you've been having the dreams. I've been showing you the real spirit. And now you take this opportunity and you present the word of God. God says, remind me of my word. Not that he forgot his word. He didn't forget. You don't forget. 
He says, remind me of my word. Why? Because his word is spirit. His word is himself. And in doing that, you are coming in agreement with the spirit of the living God. So you speak the word of God. Father, I know this house note is due. This car note is due. Whatever is due. And Father God, all I've been getting was setback delays and people jerking me around and people that owe me. You know what? I command right now that everyone that owes you will pay you double right now. That the spirit of the living God will rip that spirit. How do you make use of God to your situation? Speak the word of God. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care. They tell you bring the miracle cloth, garbage. Miracle oil, nonsense. Uh, forget all that. You don't need no miracle cloth. You don't need no Jesus juice. You don't need none of that when you have a Bible. When you have the God, which is his Bible, what you need those things for, grab a hold of the scriptures. Go and Google it. Google on love or whatever it is that you're dealing with right now. And whatever scriptures you get up, you write those scriptures down. And as you pray now, Father, this is what your word says. Father, this is what your word says. And I come in agreement with your word. Be ashamed during this time. Father, please, in the name of your son, Jesus. So I'm going to end right here. I'm going to end here. Your homework now is to, when you leave, cut off this thing. Go on your internet and Google prosperity. Google uh, advancement, whatever it is that you're dealing with. Write those if, from a scriptural perspective. Write them down because these are the scriptures you're going to use now. Because remember, you're not fighting people anymore. You're fighting devils that's influencing those people. So my prayer is that I come in agreement with what you're asking God for, according to his word. And the Bible says, wherever two or more are touching anything on this earth, acts of his father, it shall be done in heaven. And I speak it and decree right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.